What if you knew the perfect stocks to trade the option world strategy in? In this video, we're going to analyze my top two option world trading strategy stocks over the past three years. And then we're going to do a deep dive to see exactly what it takes to be the best option world trading strategy stocks. Here you see my top option wheel strategy stock over the past two and a half years. It's ticker symbol GILD. Notice that we started trading this back in October of 2020. And in fact, we did some trades in it just the other day. Now I've color coded this Excel spreadsheet for you because I want to show you something interesting about my top two option wheel stocks. Now each of these different colors represent an individual month that we traded options in that company. The reason why I did this is because I want you to see that the top option wheel stocks are ones you can trade almost ongoingly. We'll get into a little more details about that when we switch over to our Seeking Alpha platform. Notice that GLD has been a stock we've been able to trade almost ongoingly when it comes to the option wheel strategy. However, notice here at the double red line that we actually had to wait several months before we could place a trade. We closed out the covered call position we were in on November 19th. We actually didn't do a trade for about six months until this past week on May 19th. But in all, notice that over the past two and a half years, we've pocketed a net of over $10,000 by trading in GILD. On average, we're typically trading 400 shares or four option contracts worth of GILD. Notice that on average, over the past two and a half years, we've pocketed $25 and 45 cents per share for trading the option world strategy in GILD. Now, one thing I wanna to mention to you is that we don't trade just a straight option world strategy. We actually have a hybrid way that we trade the option world strategy. It is based on the option world strategy, but we've made some tweaks and adjustments that help us to realize better returns than if we just traded the option world strategy. Here you see the number two most profitable stock that I've done my version of the optional strategy over the past three years, and that's KHC Kraft Heinz. Notice we've pocketed just under $9,900 over the past three years in Kraft Heinz. Now looking back over our trading history in KHC, notice that this spreadsheet goes all the way back to January 15th of 2020, so getting close to about three and a half years ago. And we traded it ongoingly for a long time, all through 2021, through 2022, but notice that in January of 2023, we exited our last position. And since then, we haven't done a trade in Kraft Times. The reason why I'm pointing this out to you is that it's an important as an option wheel trading strategy, not one you can just do ongoingly on any stock. Really, no stock is at the perfect place to trade the option wheel strategy at all times. Here you see that since January, which is about four months ago, Kraft Heinz hasn't been at a location where I thought it was opportunistic for us to sell options against it. So there's times when you're trading the option wheel strategy, they need to take a break from certain stocks when the technicals are not in your favor. But here you see that on average, we've been trading four contracts in Kraft Heinz. And notice that we've collected almost $25 per share over the past three and a half years by trading the optional strategy in Kraft Heinz. So what does it take to be a top option wheel stock? Now you see my top five option wheel stocks over the past three years. These are the ones I've made the most profit from by trading my version of the upgraded option wheel strategy. Now there are 11 things you should consider when you're picking which stocks you should trade the option wheel strategy in. First, let's look at market cap. Notice that of my top five most profitable option wheel stocks over the past three years, four of them have a market cap of between 40 billion and 98 billion. Only one of them, ABBV, has a market cap in excess of 100 billion. So it's interesting, the companies we're doing this in, they're obviously not very small companies, but they're also not excessively large companies. Next, let's look at some quant ratings on Seeking Alpha. And this is simply a way that Seeking Alpha ranks stocks. I wanted to see if there's a pattern or something that we could use to find new opportunities. Notice here that in the sector rank, all five of our top option wheel stocks were in the top 28% of their sector rank. Now looking at industry rank, all five of our top stocks were in the top 30% of companies in that industry. But what about growth? Do they have to be high growth stocks or should they be low growth stocks? Well, here we see the quant factor grades for growth. And notice that our top optional stocks all tend to get bad grades when it comes to growth. Only ticker symbol O, Realty Income, has an A plus growth. And to be honest with you, I was kind of surprised when I saw that. Notice that our top four most profitable positions all have a very bad ranking when it comes to growth. So we're not trading in these high growth stocks. Well, what about three-year return? Notice here that our three-year return ranges from 11% to a high of 76%. Now this is total return. This includes dividends and stock price appreciation. So notice that these are companies that they've done well over the past three years, but they haven't done excessively well. 
In other words, you typically don't want to trade the option wall strategy in stocks that are going up really fast because you'd be better off just owning that stock outright. But you also don't want to be trading the option wall strategy in stocks that will be losing value. Now that's kind of a no-brainer but it is worth considering. So you kind of want to be right in that sweet spot of a good total return, but one that's not too high, but also return that's not negative. Now this next one I found pretty interesting because you know I like trading in dividend paying stocks. Now I will trade in non-dividend paying stocks, but I thought it'd be interesting to see what the dividends look like of my top five performing option wheel stocks. Notice that the forward dividend yield ranges from a low of 2.46% for CME to a high of 5% for realty income. And notice the average is around 4%. Now if we smooth this out, we look at the four-year average yield, this is where it gets interesting. Notice that four of the five have an average four-year yield of in the 4% range. Only one of them, CME, is a little bit below that at 3.34%. When you're looking for the top option wheel stocks, it might be worth checking out those that have an average four-year yield of around that three and a half to four and a half percent range. Now, since we're talking about dividends, what about a payout ratio? I mean, some stocks that can have a really high payout ratio and some stocks have a really low payout ratio. What is the typical payout ratio of our top performing stocks? Where here you see that my top four have payout ratios between 44% and 55%. Only one realty income had a higher payout ratio and it is a REIT, so you might just wanna throw that one out altogether. So typically on a non-real estate investment trust stock, it looks like ones that have a payout ratio between 40 and 60% tend to be in the sweet spot for our top performing option wheel trading strategy stocks. Now, before we move on to my next characteristic I want to share with you that I think is very important, I wanted to mention to you that Seeking Alpha has agreed to give my viewers and patrons a nice discount as well as a 14-day free trial. So if you'd like to check it out, click my affiliate link down in the description below to get that free 14-day trial. The next area I found interesting is ownership. And I wanted to see if insider ownership was a big reason for my top five stocks. Notice here, my top five stocks, none of them have a high insider ownership. In fact, the highest one is CME at only 0.35%. So insider ownership is not an important factor when it comes to being a top option wheel stock. What about price performance? What are we looking for in a stock when it comes to price performance? Now here you see a bunch of different price performance comparisons, but let's focus on the time period that we traded in, the three-year time frame. Notice that during that time, the price alone of our top five stocks wasn't negative. In fact, all five of them were in the green. One of them was only 5.77%, but the highest one was only 54.74%. So what this tells us is that we're not looking for some high flyer. We're not looking for a stock that we expect to go way up in price. Rather, we're looking for stocks that have a nice solid price performance that don't tend to go way down in value when the market crashes, but also don't tend to go way up in value either. We're gonna see a little bit more about that in this next characteristic. Now we're down at the risk section of these top five stocks. And we're looking at the 24 month beta. But just in case you don't know, what is beta? Here you see that beta is the measure of a stock's volatility in relation to the overall market. So beta tells you how much you expect your stock to move around compared to the overall market. A stock that has a beta of one, well you'd expect that stock to have up and down swings about like the typical overall market. A stock that has a beta over one, that stock would tend to be more volatile and have higher highs and higher lows in the overall market. And a stock with a beta less than one, well, it would tend to be less volatile than the overall market. So what is the typical beta of our top five stocks? Well, notice here that they are all well under one. So they are all a lot less volatile than the overall market. In fact, the two highest ones are at 0.62 and 0.6. That means they move on average about 40% less than the overall market. But our top three stocks actually have a beta of 0.51 or less. And our top stock has a beta of 0.27 over the past two years. Now let's look at a longer time frame when it comes to beta. Here's the, in this longer time frame, again, all five of these top stocks have a beta well under one. In fact, only one of them has a beta over 0.7, and that's realty income at 0.8. The other four have a beta with a high of 0.69 in KHC to a low in 0.4 in GILD. So overall, our top stocks, that made us the most money trading the optional trading strategy, were stocks that had a beta well under one. So overall, the companies that have done the best for us when it comes to trading the optional trading strategy over the past three years are companies that aren't too big, but they also aren't too small. They're ranked high in their sector and in their industry. In fact, they're typically in the top 30%. When it comes to growth, they are typically not high growth companies. If they're a dividend paying stock, they typically have a dividend over the past four years 
range from three and a half to four and a half percent. Their payout ratio tends to be in control. It's not too high, but it's also not exceptionally low. They have very little insider ownership and they have betas well under one. If you like to get an alert whenever we do trades, like the one we did a couple of days ago in GILD, which just so happens to be my most profitable stock over the past three years, check out the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. If you'd like to see how we use our upgraded version of the optional trading strategy to generate awesome cash flow and returns, check out the video series at the link below and down in the description called The Optional Strategy Explained. Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.